Vaccines are probably the most effective medical intervention that has ever been invented. So they save millions of lives, the estimate is two and a half million lives every year, and there's huge potential. What we do is we develop vaccines to save people's lives, to prevent infection, and the only way we can do that is by engaging with people who come along and volunteer in our clinical trials. And if people aren't going to do that, no vaccines will be developed. So it's very important for us to be able to engage, to let people know what's going on, and particularly here to let people know in our local community what's going on around them. Open days like this and like the Oxfordshire Science Festival, the whole programme is really designed to help people get, have an opportunity to meet people who are really at the cutting edge of some of this research and to have a chat with them, have a conversation, have some dialogue about things that they're interested in, things you might hear about in the media but don't necessarily know how to interpret some of those stories, what's true and what's not. We are inundated with information and something like a science festival like today gives you the chance to come and ask some of your questions to the people who are really the authoritative sources of information on those topics. The funny thing about the science festival is that I often get scientists come to me afterwards really surprised because they say actually today I feel like I've been challenged in a way that I don't normally get challenged. I've been asked questions that I don't normally get asked and I feel motivated and I feel like I'm going to look at my science a little bit differently from now on. It's very clear that vaccination is the most cost effective way to control any infectious disease epidemic. So that's why I've spent the last 15 years trying to develop a new vaccine for TB. Last year there were 9 million new cases of TB throughout the world and 1.5 million people died. So if we can have a vaccine that has an impact on that and stops those people getting TB and, and of course stops those people dying of TB, then that potentially would have a huge impact. There are many ways in which the public can get involved in the kind of work that we do through coming to days like this, through explaining about it to their friends and their colleagues so that there is a greater understanding of science and why we need science and need to develop tools, um, but also taking part in our clinical trials, uh, being involved in other ways in, in the BRC and in the work of the hospital and the university. I think the recent outbreak of Ebola in Africa sort of shows us what a threat these, uh, these viruses are and the importance of control controlling them. Although we're, we're working to come up with methods like vaccines and diagnostics to help control those viruses overseas, but also with climate change as well. We do a lot of work on um, vector-borne diseases, so diseases that are spread by arthropod vectors such as mosquitoes and midges. The spread of these um, mosquitoes where they, they currently are is, is heading further north with, with climate change. So as things get warmer over here and the environment comes better for them, there's a chance that these arthropod vectors can move into our environment and therefore bring the, bring the diseases with them. Today, vaccines are very important in preventing infections. We need to make them better, to make more vaccines against other infections, to cover hepatitis C and diseases that we don't have vaccines against. But the bigger picture is that vaccines are also going to be used therapeutically to help control chronic infections, maybe in people who are already HIV infected, you might knock down the virus to very low levels with a good therapeutic vaccine. And very excitingly, there's now real progress in using vaccines against cancer. And a lot of people think that in the next 10 or 20 years, that's going to be the real growth area where we can not only use vaccines in people who already have cancer to help to treat them, but even think about preventing cancer by vaccinating people maybe in their 30s and 40s to stop them getting cancer in later life.